Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA results of three medieval Livonians from Estonia. Uh, Livonians are a group of people that still exist, however I think they are uh, very much endangered. Uh, their language is slowly dying unfortunately. They are a finno ugric people and as you can see here uh, with illustrative DNA, with G25 they are closest to Estonians, followed by Latvians, followed by Lithuanians. They aren't really all that close to Finns in terms of uh, ethnic makeup, but they are clearly finno ugric balto finnic in terms of ancestry and culture and heritage, all that. I'm not going to show you their results with GZ match. you can check that for yourself because the files are in the description of the video. The links to download these files are going to be in the description. Uh, but I am going to show you their uh, traits, what they look like, and their uh, you know, monogenic, polygenic traits, diseases, stuff like that. Let's begin. So for this video we're going to start with Johannes. Johannes is this individual right here on the right, uh, ILG1. Uh, he is his mitochondrial DNA is U4, which is very European. His Y DNA is very Siberian and 1A1. It's the uh, Y DNA that nowadays is most predominant in Finland and Finnish people in general. In terms of the uh, appearance, let's start with Oka Turnherk to eye color predictor. Based on that, he seems to have what is it? Blue eyes? Yeah, it looks like blue or hazel eyes. Actually, actually no. Blue is a little bit higher percentage than hazel, but it looks like uh, not a lot of stuff was found in the file. Let's see, was a lot of things found? So the only thing that was found is that he has blue eye haplotype 2. Uh, we're going to look at his result with Nashakot real quick. Hold on. Um, we're going to find Johannes here. Is this Johannes? Yes, that's him. Alright, so... Um, he has blue eye haplotype 2, that's interesting. He's not genotyped for blue eye haplotype 3. Uh, we don't really know anything else from his file. Uh, not a lot of stuff is, is in the file, unfortunately. Um, but he does have blue haplotype 2 and he does have two light color variants here, uh, which is the reason why with YSEC his prediction is that he has blue eyes and blonde hair. We're going to look at Nashakot with the web version. Uh, with the web version he seems to have... It looks like blue eyes with an amber center. Uh, dark blonde hair. Uh, light skin and this is kind of his predicted eye color. Uh, let's compare this predicted eye color with what Nashakot is giving him. I think this is the Nashakot, the executable Nashakot's version, right? I'm not sure actually. Is this Johannes? Johannes has got to be the first one. Yeah, that's Johannes. So if I close this, that's gonna disappear. Let's try that out. Closing? Yep. So that was his, that was his predicted eye color with the executable version of Nashakot. And he's got, you know, dark blonde hair, light eyes, and light skin. That's what it looks like to me. Um, he has a genotype in this variation of DRD1, which is implicated in decreased risk of various mental health issues. This is a typical genotype for Europeans. He has CC here in OXTR, which is associated with increased OXTR expression and high levels of empathy. All right. I mean, maybe not a sociopath. Uh, two variants for higher odds of type 2 diabetes, but this is not a particularly important variation as far as I remember. Uh, no risk levels for Alzheim Alzheimer's and APOE. And here, once again, slightly decreased risk of Alzheimer's. I'm guessing that his result is going to say that he's got low odds of Alzheimer's for the polygenic risk scores. He does not have my Okay, no micro P. Good. Uh, no fat gene variants in FTOs RS 993609, not obese, and um, he is not a carrier of any of the albinism mutations, not albino, he's not genotyped for anything relating to familiar Mediterranean fever, and he's got TT genotype in this variation of MTHFR, which leads to lower odds of various health issues. Okay, and this we already saw. Let's see his polygenic risk scores. Okay, so the, for the polygenic risk scores, he's got a slightly below average score for schizophrenia. He's got a slightly below average score for type 2 diabetes, and he's got a significantly below average score for Alzheimer's. So that was Johannes. Now we are moving on to Achtzi. So let's look at his results for Oka 2 and Herc 2 eye color. For Oka 2 and Herc 2, it looks like he's got blue eyes. Yep, that's what it looks like, blue eyes, followed by, is it blue eyes with a neighbor center or green? Blue eyes with a neighbor center, it looks like. And then hazel, and the likelihood of light brown eyes is 6%. By the way, uh, 
if I had the complete file for him, the likelihood of light brown and hazel, all that would be much, much lower. Uh, the problem with that is that we are we are looking at an incomplete file. Uh, he has blue hepatite 3. For, from this, we can make the assumption that he also has BH1 and BH2. Uh, but because this is not in the file, this is still uh, it, it is still not playing a part in the calculation. So if we change the file, if we go to the file and we change it a little bit, we add a line for this variation right here and we put GG for it, we're going to see the result is going to be completely, completely different. Well, not completely, it's, it's still going to say blue, but it's going to be much more uh, blue, much less brown, is what I'm saying. Um, okay, so when, when it comes to Nashakot, uh, the executable version, that's his predicted eye color. Let's look at, um, in terms of, you know, the S&Ps where, where he's standing. So the executable version of Nashakot is saying he's got snub-shaped nose, blonde hair, and it looks like blue eyes. Um, he's got blue eye haplotype 3. Once again, just by this fact, him having blue eye haplotype 3, we already know that he also has BH2 and BH1. Um, he does not have BH4. Also, this is also a given. If you have BH3 and you have BH2, you cannot have BH4. So this pretty much everything. You can figure out everything, his whole genotype, by just this one variation right here. Um, he's got light skin. It looks like light skin here. And once again, light skin here. Uh, this is not actually zero. It's not him having in any... It's not him not having any light alleles. It's just not found in the file. Uh, it's printing the memory address, which is zero in this case. It's not printing the number of light alleles. And is there anything else that's interesting here? He does not have Dirac Venice and MC1R in this variation, but it's not a particularly high quality file. Uh, let's see the um, executable, I mean, the web version of Shakot results for him. Uh, with the web version, he's scoring, it looks like, blue eyes. Actually, this looks a lot like his result with the. Um, uh, with the executable version. Is it identical? Yeah, it's identical. It's exactly the same result. Okay. Uh, the part that is not exactly the same is the hair color prediction because you see um, in the executable version I only have red, blonde, brown, black. Uh, here I added light blonde, dark blonde, I separated the blonde into two categories, light and dark. So he's got dark blonde hair, uh, blue eyes, light skin, and this is his predicted eye color. Interesting. All right. Um, he's got GG, GG genotype in this variation of Comet, which is the typical genotype for most humans and leads to slightly lower risk of schizophrenia. He does not have any derived no-go learner variants in DRD2 Pro, Frenetine Pro, so that means higher number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and higher odds of schizophrenia. What's interesting is um, there seems to be a dislinkage here because uh, G the G allele in this variation tends to come with the A allele in this variation, but he's got GG here and he's got GG in this variation as well. So uh, it looks like he inherited the G allele here with the A allele here, and in fact, uh, he inherited two two copies of that. Uh, G here with the A with the G here together with the G here with the G here. So uh, it's like a double dislinkage. This is uh, quite atypical. You're not going to see very frequently GG in this variation together with GG in this variation. Mm, and his genotype here suggests that he would have less dopamine D2 receptor sites and decreased risk of schizophrenia. He has a G genotype in this variation of DRD2, which is implicated in slightly increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain and slightly increased likelihood of schizophrenia. Uh, I, I am um, expecting his result for polygenic, polygenic traits to have a pretty high score for schizophrenia. I'm not sure, though. Um, no risk variance for psychosis in this variation of MIR-378F. And, um, okay, okay. Um, he's got GG in this, in this variation of OXTR, which leads to two variants for lower levels of empathy. Okay, so probably uh, not as empathetic as some of the other people. Um, does not have type 1 diabetes. Well, I don't, no, this is not the one. This is not the one. There is, uh, there is a variation here that's really predictive of type 1 diabetes, but this is not the one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, not a carrier for C282Y hemochromatosis mutation, doesn't have hemochromatosis. No APOE2 alleles in APOE, no risk alleles for Alzheimer's in APOE. Probably he's not going to have 
Actually, no, because of this junior type right here, he's gonna have, I think, above average score for Alzheimer's. I'm not sure. Let's see. We'll, we're gonna check. Um, increased cranial size and 2% higher IQ. Uh, this junior type for lower IQ. Impaired muscle performance, likely endurance athlete rather than um, power athlete or sprinter. No fat gene variants in FCOs, RS 99, 39, 609. Once again, not obese and not an Asian flusher. Um, Asian flushing is basically there's. Uh, there's a phenomenon that happens with Asian people, East Asians, uh, when they drink alcohol, their cheeks turn all red and they, you know, they don't tolerate alcohol too well. Those are Asian flushers and it's actually determined genetically, right? So uh, this is the variation that is responsible for, it. this is the variation that researchers believe is responsible for this phenomenon, Asian flushing. So this individual is not an Asian flusher and does not have any of the albinism mutations and it looks like no risk variance for familiar Mediterranean fever and now we're gonna check his polygenic risk scores let's do that alright so for the polygenic risk scores it looks like he's got below average odds of schizophrenia I was wrong because my prediction was that he would have above average odds he has below average odds of type 2 diabetes and he indeed has slightly above average odds of Alzheimer's All right. Now we are moving on to Kalevi, which is the last individual. Uh, let's see what he scores for the OCA2 and HERC2 eye color predictor, predictor estimate, whatever. It looks like he's scoring hazel eyes, which is kind of interesting. He's scoring way too high dark brown, way too high blue eyes. When you see a spread like this, it's an indicator that not a lot of stuff was found in the file. And let's actually go ahead and check at the bottom here. Yeah, none of the important stuff is in the file here. How about we look in the executable version of the Shakot to get a better, a cleaner um, estimate. Is there anything that was found in the whole Okatun? Well, this is one of the important, I guess, sort of important genotypes that was found. Um, this is another sort of important genotype that was found. So it's probably, it's probable that he had light eyes. It's very probable, but it's not, 100% determined uh, for sure because this genotype is sort of predictive of blue haplotype 1 but then again uh, having blue haplotype 1 does not even mean you'd have BH2 or BH3 which are the ones that really contribute to light eyes we're gonna see his result with Nashakot with the web version uh, with the web version he's scoring light brown eyes but once again um, this kind of a score it's not exactly, it's it's not precise, right? Uh, a lot of stuff that's important is simply not in the file. You know, maybe the researchers that were conducting the DNA test, they were looking for something else. They were looking for some something that they are, you know, maybe they were saving money and they didn't just like test the person with my heritage or something. But um, the SNPs that are in the file are not the ones that my Nashakot looks for basically, right? Uh, the, uh, if you took a commercial test, if you took a MyHeritage or 23andMe or Ancestry, any of the commercial tests, everything that's important will be in your file. Uh, in this case, this is this is not true. Uh, we see that the prediction is brown hair, uh, light brown eyes, and light or fair skin, and this is the predicted eye color. But let's go ahead and look at, actually let's take a closer look, why is it giving him this kind of a prediction because if you just look at this genotype and this is the only relevant important genotype in Oka2 and Herc2 region that we can go off here uh, you'd assume that he has, he has light color of eyes and hair uh, he's got this genotype in Asip once again contributing to lighter color of skin um, this genotype here contributing to light color of skin so what is it? what exactly is it that caused him to get a prediction for uh, for, well, brown hair and and light brown eyes. I'm not sure. I'm not really sure. Well, okay. Uh, let's look at his polygenic risk scores. For the polygenic risk scores, he is scoring below average odds of schizophrenia. He is scoring below average odds of type 2 diabetes. And he is scoring below average odds of Alzheimer's. Uh, he's got AG in Combs Valmet variation, meaning Valmet genotype, intermediate speed of dopamine reuptake, and intermediate dopamine levels. Alright, so he's between Warrior and Warrior. He's not genotyped for this variation in MAOA. 
uh, which also has to do with Warrior versus Warrior documentary uptake. He's got CC genotype in this variation of DRD2, which means he's got higher odds of schizophrenia. And this is actually super surprising. Look at that. Okay, so I found uh, a little bit of a little bit of information in this file that uh, leads to very good content. He's got AA genotype in TAC1, and if you aren't sure what is the significance of this, the allele significantly reduces the availability of dopamine G2 receptor sites in the brain, 20% uh, for every allele. So for, with this kind of a genotype, it's basically like taking really heavy doses of antipsychotics, and it's a very it's a very extreme genotype, and what's interesting is that it is the default genotype for every non-human. If you look at the gorilla, chimpanzee, if you look at the Neanderthal, uh, they all have AA genotype. But humans, we tend to have the G allele here instead. So in the case of Kalevi, this is Kalevi, right? Yeah, this is Kalevi. So in the case of Kalevi, uh, he's got this very atypical genotype for humans that leads to significantly decreased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. And of course, the implications is that higher odds of alcoholism, Parkinson's, ADHD, various stuff like that. Um, he's got TC genotype here in DRD4, which is associated with a slightly elevated likelihood of multiple mental health conditions, including novelty seeking, addiction, and intellectual disability. He has CC here, which means he do does not have any derived variants for European lactose persistence. But uh, the main variation for European lactose persistence is actually this one, which is not determined excuse me, not determined from the file. Um, he's got CT genotype in this variation of OXTR, which is associated with decreased OXTR expression and lower levels of empathy, as well as higher risk of autism spectrum disorder. He Does he have any hemochromatosis variants? No. He does not have any hemochromatosis variants, does not have hemochromatosis. He's got CC here, which leads to decreased risk of Alzheimer's and no micro P. Micro P, you know I have to mention it in every video. Increased cranial size and 2% higher IQ, higher IQ, 8 points higher IQ than individuals with AA genotype. So it looks like, um, you know, IQ is extremely polygenic. So um, these three S&Ps, the contribution, the contribution they play in IQ is maybe like, I don't want to undersell it, maybe like 2%. But um, in reality, there is like, hundreds of SNPs that have to do with IQ. So, you know, this is not particularly important. And GG here, no variance for increased pain sensitivity. And not a carrier of any of the albinism mutations, not albino. And also it looks like he is not a carrier of any of the familiar Mediterranean fever mutations. Uh, the familiar Mediterranean fever mutations are very uncommon for Northeast Europeans. They are most common in Jews, Arabs, um, Turks, Armenians, people like that, not Northeastern Europeans. And I don't think any of the other two individuals had, yeah, none of the other two individuals had any familiar Mediterranean fever variants either. He has GG in the variation of MTHFR, normal homosteine levels, um, slightly lower than average odds for a variety of illnesses. It basically has to do with folate metabolism, from my understanding. And he has AA genotype here, which leads to higher blood pressure. Interesting. Well, uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download these files from link, which is in the description. I will remind you, you can upload them to GED Match, whatever. Do whatever you want with them. And thanks for watching until the end. Leave a like and subscribe. Goodbye.